Okay, hi, hi, Chess. Welcome to, to Nothing Media. Um, I'm talking to you because you wrote these two books, The Story of You and The Infinite Journey. One of my favorite books, I think. And they are part of a series that's called Life Beyond Personality. So would you would you be able to explain these three things? What does the title mean, the story of you? What does the second one mean, infinite journey? And what, what, is, what is a life beyond personality? Well, um, story of you. I think it's best to start with uh, the word personality and what I mean by that, because that really informs everything I do. So I've got a, I've got a, a glossary in those books, as you know, because I think the use of words with this subject in particular, the accurate, accurate use of words is very important. So I have this glossary where I define my use, my application of these words, because it helps for clarity of communication. So I'm going to read out the definition in the book of personality, and then perhaps we can discuss that and go into exactly what I mean, if there are any questions. So personality is the construct of you, an identity built on the building blocks of the contraction, emotion, beliefs, desires, and hope. The personality has a function of self-preservation, it is programmed to maintain its sense of absolute authority. In the personality, the mind is king and all of its thoughts, beliefs and emotions, which are mostly the product of your past, are in control of your life. So one can assume that personality just enters the scene and never leaves until, until the end. The end meaning death? In, meaning death. Like most people would just identify as a personality and then. Yes, I would say that that's most people's experience. Yeah. And what I write about is the um, unusual or rare, apparently, experience of the, the um, seeing through of the personality, the identification with it happens within the life. So it's a kind of death. It's, an, a death. it's a death of an identification with the personality as uh, described in that description. So uh, just to clarify a bit more, this is not the death of the self. Uh, the self is something that develops soon after child in childhood uh, that we all need. Um, it's the ability to uh have the appearance that i'm here and you're there and to operate the functionality of oneself in the world so self is needed but the way i talk about it is the uh personality is what develops on top of that self which you could call the full self and the personality develops it's it's not neutral uh the self is neutral it's just an operating system but on top of it lies all these uh, gets it gets covered with emotions and all these things i've said the hope desires beliefs and all of that builds around the wound and the wound is the moment when we lose our um our grounding in being and being is part of what we come into this world with in the natural state so there's a point where we lose that everybody knows that but what i focus on because the way out of that dream is to understand how you got into it, is the formation of the personality, what it's constructed of, and around the seeing through of it, because that's how one becomes free of identification with it. So by identification with the personality, we suffer a certain kind of suffering, personality suffering that comes from that identification with it. So that may be neurosis, uh, constant um, mind chatter, negativity towards oneself, lack of self-love, all these kind of things are a type of suffering that I'm uh, saying is um, unnecessary uh, if one finds this, which is a disidentification from the personality from which all that suffering arises. 
So it's not the end of suffering, it's the end of personality suffering. So could I say that it's the end of a personal agenda? Well, I think we can still have agendas in this. Uh, you know, um, so because the other thing, we need to lay out this landscape. There's another thing in the landscape, which is character, right? So character is, the way I define it, is our talents, our things that make us distinct. You know, you come from the same parents, but you may have a very different set of idiosyncrasies and talents than your brother. Uh, and those things are kind of just part, a natural part of, of who we are. And they're, they're beautiful and they're special and they're to be celebrated. So, for example, I'm an artist and uh, that's part of my character. I see that as part of my character. Um, so I may have an, it depends really what you mean by an agenda. You know, I may have an agenda to fulfill my artistic creativity, if you want to call that an agenda. But that's different from a personality and agenda. So a personality agenda would be, for example, I need to uh, be uh, the best artist because I feel inferior and therefore there's a tension and a stress in needing to be the best or the biggest selling or I have jealousy for other people who are doing better than me. All those sort of things would be uh, suffering that comes out of the agenda of the personality, which feels lesser a type of personality that feels letter, lesser. I mean, some personalities, of course, do the opposite and feel, you know, more than, and uh, they're full of uh, kind of self-aggrandizement and they think they're special. So there's different kinds of personalities because this moment is a gap and this moment is great and beautiful because... <laughs> <laughs> If, if if there was a need to continue that thought, there would be suffering from it. But actually, this is like a hole in the, in the talk, which I quite like. Um, Would you experience that when when you're walking and you compare you compare uh, walking before this opening and this awakening and this shift and walking nowadays that you you're not in these streamlines of, of thought, like literally like you're living in a gap. I would say so definitely because, you know, one of the things I said in that definition of personality is that, uh, what did I say just a moment? Um, the personality, in the personality, the mind is king. So basically the personality is very identified and safe with with the mind. It's It's like its center of functioning. If you think of that in relation to being, being is not mind centered. The natural state is not mind centered, it's being centered, it's beyond the mind. So in in life beyond personality, it's not, there's no mind anymore, that would be ridiculous, I'm using my mind now. But the mind is kind of not um, in the service of the personality. It's uh, used when it's needed. And um, in fact, it can become more efficient but in your example, so therefore, if you are walking, there would be more of that beingness rather than the mind constantly chattering. And therefore, you would be in relation to the nature you were walking through more deeply in relation to it, because there wouldn't be the mind and then that out there. So you're saying by, by definition, personality is more in the mind than in feelings? Oh, definitely. Because feelings are, you know, uh, a threat to personality. And the reason for that is that personality developed in a response to the wound. And the wound is the moment when we lost our natural state, which is our, you know, one level you can see it as our groundedness in being and our relationship to oneness, our being within oneness. There's a point where we lose that and we start to enter the relative level more and in relationships with parents and everything, which is all natural and all good. But there is a point where our connection to the everything is lost and becomes focused down so much and we become this thing, this self, 
and we lose that sense of beingness and enter into gradually into the personality. So um, there's great pain involved in the wound. Uh, it's uh, I mean, this is a massive subject in itself, but uh, the personality learns to uh, protect itself. It's part of its job is to protect itself from pain of feelings. And it does that by closing down our openness to feelings. So feelings are a threat to the personality. So this personality develops and in many ways you can see that it does a great job. It keeps our life running and it gives a sense of, of, of who we are and it, it protects ourselves from feelings we don't want to feel. So all these things are working and you could say it's an efficient thing and it works well. But there is this downside. Um, there is a suffering involved in it, as I've mentioned earlier. And also, I wouldn't call it our natural state. It's something that arises. But it's if you look at a newborn baby, it's we don't begin in that same space that we, be, we become uh, enveloped in and identified with. So when we come, we don't have the personality suffering. Um, that's the payoff for the protection and the life that the personality gives us. You know, many people when they hear about this, uh, well, not many people, but some people will say, what do you mean life beyond personality? I am my personality and we need our personality. And uh, all I can say is that if, if that's your experience, then you haven't experienced life beyond personality because you would know that there is something, a way of living that is beyond it, that has a very different flavor to it. So you're saying that for yourself, um, I'm not sure if it's still true, but if at all personality enters the game, then the, the distance to uh, to uncovering it is infinitely small. So it can never establish. Yes, I would say that, yeah. So there's an important point to be made here too, that like I said earlier, like the personality is not bad. It is just something that happens. So it's not about making the personality the bogeyman. It's just about seeing life as it is. And if one has a, a yearning or an, a sense that there is something else, which often comes through people having openings. So for some reason, life gives them the gift of uh, a moment, even a moment or a five minutes where they're not subject to the uh, what they're normally subject to, which is the life and the dream of the personality and all of its desires and sufferings. So there can be a, an experience of that, which can then lead one afterwards to think, what the hell was that? And uh, is that am I this or am I that? Well, how does this fit into my life? Uh, it makes you question your ongoing everyday experience. And it can start a search and a yearning to find what I'm talking about here, which is life beyond personality. So do you think that uh, often people that lose their minds in, in terms of psychosis or um, other mental health issues that, that they struggle with personality itself? Like falling in and out of personality? I think they definitely struggle with personality, yeah. But I think they're also struggling with more than that too. I mean, mental health issues is is another area as well on top. Do you know what I mean? There's normally mad. I mean, from the point of view of this, life beyond personality, to live identified as personality looks like a kind of madness. Now, if you look at an extreme example, it's easier to see this. So, you know, you might look at, I'm trying to think of an example other than Trump, because he's such an obvious example. I think, okay, let's look at Trump. Um, you know, here's everyone, most people, most sane people can see that this is a very extreme kind of personality, which is pumped up with self-belief and needs to prove itself and needs to be the biggest guy in the room and the most rich guy in the room. And 
now from the point of view of this all that looks very silly and very childish and in fact it does probably to many people um that's a kind of madness that's not a natural state that's something that's learned that was inculcated in him through his childhood his father everything that grew up around him and he obviously never questioned it and therefore it got stronger and stronger now i think his brother actually who died he actually became an alcoholic sort of did question it and hence you know he had problems because uh he was in a, an environment in which it was only right that men should be like this and that you don't question it so sometimes in the family and in the group personality, it's it's the ones who question it. They have a really hard time because there's a there's a pressure on them to conform to the consensus. This is how men are. You know, Trump was told, uh, I write about this in the book. There was a kind of mantra from his dad, which is we are killers and kings. So if you don't conform to that, you're kind of a lesser you're seen as a lesser person, a lesser man, you're not a real man which is a weird upside down world, but that's what, you know, so you either conform to that and that becomes part of your life or you start to question it. Now I'm just using Trump as an example because everybody has their own version from their childhood and their conditioning and everything of what they're conditioned and expected to be. The rules and the beliefs are, uh, you know, what they lead you to be, what you're meant to be like, to be a good person or a, so if you're religious, it might be about being good and kind. If you're, if you're a Trump family, you've got that. Everybody, every family has got its own structure. So part of finding this is looking at one's own family structure, one's own psychology and history, the story of you. This is why I call it the story of you, because by understanding the story of you, one can see beyond that story to what you are before the story. Yeah, I think I think it's an uh, interesting uh, aspect that personality is presented as as the complete normal status quo, like in the in the example you mentioned of Donald Trump, but also also f for example for me it was uh, completely completely natural even to to consider yourself as a personality and then certain aspects of i remember that as a, as a child like i was careful that i was not speaking to myself because i knew it would be regarded uh, insane if if i was walking in the street talking to myself and also when uh, like frequently i came across the, ch the joke that um that people said yeah you're a multiple personality and other people laugh about saying oh i'm a multiple personality like um there is a there's a group dynamic that totally requires for you to be a unified personality but in itself it is uh, very uh unseen that this personality itself is even if it's unified um uh a split off of of reality so the first step in, for example, approaching Trump now, I would I would say is to actually split again so that you can start to see that the personality is itself a split that is has split itself off. And then you look at that and uh, you, you're saying you shouldn't make it the, the, the bogeyman, like not not the, not the bad guy. But at the same time, that's that's kind of the beginning of of change also. So. My question is, how how is that different from from a pure acceptance? So you're not you're not saying um, just just uh, look at everything that personality doesn't accept it, but at the same time you are um, uh, advocating a concept that's called non-doing. So I think it's it's an interesting differentiation to understand. How how acceptance is different from from non doing uh, is is that enough or should I should I elaborate no, more? No, that's fine. Um, okay, I, I would I would put it like this. There is a natural change that happens. That's, that's why I would call it non doing when the false is seen through. 
So the reason that there's this dodgy area about acceptance, like, yes, everything is accepted. But that doesn't mean it, it's, it can't change. So this is why I said, yeah, the personality is not wrong. Uh, it's, but it's, you know, you could say it's, it's not wrong, but it's, it's not free. Right. So the yearning starts to push you in the direction of what is free not what is necessarily the most comfortable or the most you know i'm my this is my safe zone so i'm staying with this um when the personality is seen uh naturally things that one was identified with uh, identifying with something keeps it running and when that identification is seen through when the patterns are seen through they do naturally fall away uh, but they fall away. It's not self-help. It's just a natural process. Does that explain it at all? Uh, yes. Um... Le okay. Let me say a bit more about self-help. So self-help basically works on the print. Is a, basically a personality trying to improve the personality. This is about seeing beyond the personality, and it comes from a yearning and a knowledge inside somewhere that there is something beyond it. So the energy that goes into this is not doing. The energy that goes into self-development is a kind of doing because it's driven by the personality itself, which says, if I go to the gym five nights a week, I'm going to feel stronger and I'm going to be healthier and I'm going to be a better person. And I'm going to be more attractive. There's a kind of a stress involved in that. Now, there's also a drive that goes into the yearning, you could say, but it's a drive to sort of return to the alpha, to the beginning point that is already in us. But it doesn't come from the, the same stress. You, I suppose you could call it a stress because there is a deep, heartfelt yearning to return to the natural state. But I wouldn't really call it a stress. It's just a uh, yearning is the best word I've got for it. But the but the pers pursuit, is that the right word? The moving in that direction comes from a very different place and it's, uh, it's deep and it's, uh, it doesn't have that same stress in it. So therefore I would call it non-doing. But out of that, change happens that is the deepest change you could ever have in your life. You know, the, the self-help changes are on the very top surface. These changes are like on a soul level because they're to do with the absolute level. They're to do with who you are, who you aren't, you know, what is false and what is real. So as I, as I know your personal history, there were openings before. Yeah. And then um, there was a, a lot of um, um, confusion on, on how to make those openings uh, come back. And it was actually impossible. Yeah. So I wonder, at, at this stage, did you did you want to to become a master in the personality sense? Like, did you want to be a personal, spiritual, higher being, uh, as so you can re reach that state that later turned out to be non-personal? Did you personalize it? No, no. Um, I only wanted to find it because a, I, I, there was this feeling of, of the freedom in it. That's all really. It's just a very natural turning towards the light. It's as simple as that. Really. There wasn't a mind. This is what I'm saying. The mind didn't get hold of it and try and do something with it. If a mind got hold of it, it would say something like, ah, if, if you, for example, it could say, oh, if you find is you could be you could be greater than other people or something or no more or you could be a teacher and I mean I had no uh absolutely no interest in that at all uh my only thing was like this feels true and real and I want to find out what it means yeah but there was there was nobody to really um show you the right way well, I had the literature of spiritual literature that everyone has. I mean, back in those days, it wasn't the internet, but 
Um, you know, there were teachers around then that I kind of looked into and read. And I, yeah, I learned certain things. I, I never found one who kind of, um, I took a bit from all over the place really. And none of it really, uh, helped me wake up, mm -hmm. but I'm sure they, in some ways it all contributed, but many years later, really. But at the same time, you're running an experiment right now. So I have to say I'm, I'm part of it. So yeah. you, you, you're making, making a group where, yeah. where you can, you can explore personality. Mm, exactly. But, That's the laboratory we're in. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you have any, any hopes that for anyone that could like actually like tear away their, their personality? Well, do you know what, what's interesting, Marcus is like, there's, there's two things that goes on. I find myself in this role, right. Of a, a kind of some kind of spiritual teacher. Now I define, you know, that's, these, once again, words are important. Spiritual to me, the way I define it in my book, is that which is beyond personality. So from that, if that is the definition, um, I am a teacher of that, okay? Because I am sharing this and talking about it and writing about it. So, you know, there's, there's two parts to this job. There's one where I'm talking like we are now in more general terms, about uh, the, what this is and trying to describe it and convey what it is. So there's that. Then there is the contact with um, people like such as yourself and the the laboratory and the potential the potential for let's talk about you for you to find this in your life, right? And I can tell you the bit that most interests me is that. That's that's the fulfillment of this. It's a beautiful thing. It's, you know, there's nothing greater than seeing someone find this in their own life. But, and this is where, you know, you see if personality was still running here, you could imagine how the personality could come in at this point and say, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to show you the way I have the answer. You don't blah, blah, blah. I mean, I do have a kind of answer. There is a kind of answer here. It's true. And if there wasn't, I wouldn't be writing books about it or talking to you now, but it's, there's no personality here that can take credit and control that or make it work. So the, the experiment is to see if, if, um, this is, if this can be kind of, uh, passed on in any way, if this flame can be kind of lit in, for example, you. And how does that happen? Well, you know, I don't know. Apart from, I start by the sharing of things like I'm sharing today. And then for me, there's a much deeper level, right? You know, we have started working one-to-one -one a bit because the it's the application of this in a particular life is, is the point of contact for everyone. You know, it's like how, so it's, it goes beyond sort of the gener generalities of it to uh, well, how, what does this mean for you with your particular story and if we can kind of get in there and look at that that's where you can move forward in a way that um can bring a real experience of this in your life rather than just oh yeah that's a concept i like that sounds good okay so do you have any experience of this yeah absolutely i mean uh, from my experience, the way out of of the grip of of personality awareness and and of like my own personal agenda, blah blah blah, and and, and suffering from it, is it's not straight and it's not like uphill. It's not like okay, it's getting better, it's getting better, it's getting better. It's more like um, it's very painful. You you are running away from emotions. You are running away from feelings that that. That have a reason, like they 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 are blanked out for a reason, yeah. and so at many at many stages of that process, you you are basically down on the floor, broken, sad, crazy, and then at that stage, it is extremely dangerous, I would say, for for oneself to be dragged back in by a group personality to 
be convinced that no, 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 you have to like build up your personality structure again. Like you have to pretend that that that's how it is. You have to make like a structure in your day, and eventually like uh, pretend to be a person until you until you believe it, and then and then continue life. But um, when you have a group as as this experiment that experiment that you are running, and even when you only have those books. Then you begin to understand that um, this is this is a framing of group personality. The group personality just frames frames life as as necessarily run by a personality, but it it is not um, essentially so. So then you suddenly have you have friends, you have you have uh, you in that role as a teacher to um, to point to things, and then when the air gets very thin. You um, you don't turn around and like hide because it can get really really yeah. really threatening and really uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, and this is the function of people like me. You know, it's like otherwise you're in the environment of the group personality that says, "Don't go in that direction. You're going to go mad. You're going to be, you know, because they didn't go in that direction." And they've learned it's safe to hang on to their personalities, right? So that's what they know. And you you teach what you know, and they, that's what they pass on to you. Even if they don't talk about it, they're teaching it to you in the way they live their lives. So there's a danger when, fi- when someone finds this, has a, a bit of an opening or something, that they're cast adrift because they're cast adrift from the general tribe of man, the group personality of man, which is not interested in this. And that's when you start gravitating towards kind of spiritual groups and stuff. And you need, this is where someone like me offers a kind of environment in which that little bit of light from that opening is actually seen for what it is. That That's the direction you need to be going in. And the support that you need support, just as you had support to live in the personality and everybody told you that's how you should live. This is like support for actually a life outside of it. And uh, and I I think the group as well is very important because you learn Oh, other people are like me. They know there's something there. They haven't don't quite know what it is. They've been seeking and and that gives you a certain support as well. Like, oh, I'm not going mad. You know, other people know something of this and uh, are struggling with this that this pattern in my personality you know whether it's self-criticism or s- fear of feeling things whatever it is yeah this this feeling at the moment is is for me one of the top interesting aspects of of life beyond personality and i look at it also in 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 the tradition of this society and tradition of my family which which completely uh, supports suppressing feeling. Yes. So uh, there is there is an absolute culture of of actually like not letting out the the, the fear and the sadness and the and the, the, the all the uncomfortable stuff. But uh, on on top of that, there is a lot of behaviors that that build. Like for example, the, the radio is completely turned on all the time in a supermarket or in in a friend's place. Uh, there's always something that needs to be done, like playing cards, um, watching television, being on the phone. There's like a hundred mechanisms that yeah. that facilitate a life beyond feelings. Mm. When when I recently realized there's like very strong feelings coming up. Now we are in like a corona lockdown, so it's it's possible in a better way to to let that stuff happen but even when i have contact with one person or the other then i feel like oh my god it's very inconvenient i shouldn't i shouldn't but right now with with the group and with the, with uh, a lot of insight um i understand it no i have uh, I do want that feeling i do want to like explore what what is this that i have been pushing down so it's it's a it's another question that uh, I have because I think you you outline four aspects of life beyond personality in your books and one of them is fulfilling engagement with life. Four aspects of uh, the natural state, yeah, and one of them is um, fulfilling engagement with life, yeah. Could you elaborate on that and then on the other three? Well, uh, they're all really big subjects, so let's just do. Uh, oh. 
Okay. Yeah, um, I'm sure it will come up naturally, but fulfilling engagement with life. So look at a baby. That's what they live. That's part of being. Personality is the point at which we, that starts shutting down, really. This is this didn't make me feel good, so I'm going to close to that. And the body has a certain reaction, and the psychology has a reaction, and we learn we don't want to go there. And you multiply that many, many times, and you end up with a personality that has a kind of shell around it, and part of its defensive structure is to keep those feelings away and not to go in the direction of them. So our society is built around supporting that. The group personality out there is built to uh, celebrate busyness, always being busy, uh, distracting yourself. Technology is just as far as the personality is concerned. The development of technology has just been wonderful because it, there's even more and more endless ways to distract yourself constantly. And it's taken to be normal. It's utterly normal to distract yourself constantly. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, that, that from outside the personality, this is madness. But in the group personality and in personality, it's just part of life. It's taken to be normal. Um, so in the being, what is normal is fulfilling engagement with life. And that means we live our lives and we all have feelings. Things come up. Sometimes we can be sad. Fulfilling engagement with life means this being is feeling sad right now. And there's nothing in the system from a personality that will try and stop it. So that's natural. That's, a nat that's why it's called the natural state. The natural happens. So that's what I mean by fulfilling engagement with life. So... Beyond personality, one starts living one's life in that way, in a very different way. Our relationship to our life is different in that feelings become just like breathing. And then our relationship to them is very natural. Is that the end of boredom? <clears throat> Probably, yeah. Because I can't remember when I was last bored. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I do get bored, actually. I get bored by personalities. <laughs> <laughs> I find the world of personality extremely boring. Uh, I could look at a film that was very personality based and I would be just bored by it. You know, um, certain things that in, in the group personality are accepted as exciting and part of the escape and how to be distracted. Uh, You know, Frank, for example, there may be a sort of superhero film that's all about macho men. And I mean, I'm just totally bored by that because the level of it is so I mean, I don't want to put it down. It's entertainment is what it is. But from this point of view, you know, I guess, you know, we all have differences and that. The energetic source of that kind of film is not made for someone like me. It's not. It's made for someone to distract themselves from their life with. And so that would bore me. Uh, yeah. So I guess certain things would bore me. But, you know, I don't go in the direction of those things generally. So I don't. Uh, boredom doesn't really feature much now. I can't remember when I was last bored. Because if a film like that came on, I obviously I, I watch a film. I love films. Don't get me wrong. I love films. I love art. And I'm watching films to see, is there anything real in it? Is there any real feeling in it? Is there any great uh, acting in it? Any great um, communication of, about what life is? And of course, it, that could be violent too. You know, there are films about violence, like The Godfather, for example, that are very intelligent examinations of that world. So it's not really the subject. It's the energy and the energetic source that it's coming from. Uh, so I check out a film and I sense where it's coming from and I'm very quick now to kind of turn it off if it's, if it's not, uh, if it's, if I know it's going to bore me because it's coming from a very kind of boring place as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Yeah, because that's, that's my recent experience that, um, like previously in this, in this life, uh, I've been constantly in that situation that I was, uh, sitting alone at home. And I'm getting like uh, edgy or something, and then I feel like uh, I want to smoke a cigarette or I just want to call some friends or or 
take a hot bath or something, or I, I feel like it's a little bit dull, this existence. So I'd rather like drink some yeah. sports or something. Yeah. But sure. like recently I found out that uh, paradoxically, this feeling of, of boredom only um, developed because it covers up another feeling. And, and due to that feeling, I think I feel nothing. So I'm bored and then I yes. do something against the boredom. It's, it's a, a pretty complex, but yeah, uh, no, I understand. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, if you, if you feel, if you start going into those feelings, you will not be bored. <laughs> That's for sure. You may feel something you don't, perhaps don't want to feel right now, or it might be painful, but you will not be bored. In the full feeling engagement with life, you're, you're not really bored by, yeah, I, like I say, I can be bored by person, the world of personality, but apart from that, by nature and myself or my wife or my creativity, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing boring in it. It's just joy, really. I mean, one of the other, um, you know, you, you mentioned the four uh, kind of corners of uh, the natural state, and one of them, I would say, is joy. And in this openness, now, this is not to say that life can't have suffering in it, but there is... Uh, and in the background, there is a there's a kind of background sense of a sort of primal feeling of joy, which just comes from what I would call our uh, original relationship to life, which is we're built to eat, we're built to breathe, we're built to communicate with others. And just by doing those things and fulfilling our humanity in that way, there's a kind of joy in it. Therefore, you can see like, well, if you're living all those things, where does boredom come in? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I think it's it's got to do with uh, like this blocking of the energy source. Like I, I just mentioned it, I know you talk about it. Uh, and it's it's it reminds me of the difference made by Chido Krishnamurti between joy and pleasure. So he says, um, yeah, like you, you're looking for, for certain pleasures so uh, because I think because the the joy of life itself is 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 blocked I don't know I don't know how he says it but um, I know what you mean and maybe uh, normally like in Buddhist world that would I mean I'm not a Buddhist but I think that's where the word desire would be put we have desires and the desires become our distractions and that's very different from the kind of joy from just naturally engaging in life a desire comes from personality, like I've got to have this, I've got to have that Ferrari, otherwise I'm not a proper man, or I'm not kind of showing how great I am or wealthy I am. That's a desire, that's a very different thing. So all that's part of the game and the play of personality. Yeah. And then another aspect is choiceless awareness, isn't it? It is, it is. Okay, so the way I talk about it is, <clears throat> There is something I call personality awareness. <clears throat> and in a way, we've, we've discussed that a bit because you've uh, explained and demonstrated how there are certain feelings that come up and some part of you doesn't want to go there, right? So personality awareness will actually look away from those things. So it's an editing of your experience. Something's coming up. And something in you, the personality says, I don't want to feel that. So it kind of blocks it out. So that's personality awareness. So by contrast, uh, choices awareness, it's what we're talking about, where that editing doesn't happen anymore. So an example I just gave, uh, if you're feeling something, you are not editing out it out by uh, repressing it. It is embraced as part of this moment. What needs to happen so if you just imagine that across your life um you know a phrase I often used is uh, i think i said it to you recently everything has to be seen M meaning you, you're not if you're looking away and repressing things that's not the full feeling engagement with life so seeing everything is part of choices awareness you're willing to look at whatever comes um so that's what I mean by choices awareness. There's no one choosing not to look at something anymore. You may have a preference. You may think, I don't really want to do it. I really want to look at that. 
but there's something else that says well i i'm not going to not look at it because it's life happening to me now that's how life has reached me in this moment and i think what you've described marcus is is that happening you know you you're starting you you've having choices awareness on that situation of you sitting there and your mind and the personality is saying oh, i'll call a friend turn the tv on and then you won't have to feel this you're starting to make that setup conscious that's choices awareness coming in and that choices awareness undercuts that whole cycle and that activity of personality so this is how it works you see this is how the personality gets undermined so what we do in the group and in sessions is supporting that process and it's almost like weaning you off the teat as it were of the group personality into another kind of realm of people who know that actually the personality is that everyone thinks they are and is the only way to live isn't the only way to live and if you dare to go beyond its uh orbit it's it's um context its arena you will find a way of living that is very very different and you know you've got to say it's more free it's more joyous and uh more feeling based and natural mm -hmm. but you can't just proclaim it right you can't just say you can just uh, um i think in that scene it's going on a lot that people just keep proclaiming there is no me there is no me there is no me and and somehow insist linguistically in um in something that is not backed up by energy i'm saying that because i've i've, I've experienced it myself that i just keep denying keep denying personality but i couldn't i couldn't actually um uh take it out i, I couldn't like couldn't yeah so what you're describing is an intellectual engagement with this once again that's a very safe place for the personality so the personality can even play the game of saying oh yeah i know what that means i know there's no one here i know i know all the spiritual i mean there's so much information out there now it's very easy to pick up anything and build a kind of spiritual personality where you know all these things conceptually but you see what you described in this going into that feeling that's difficult is a different engagement with this that goes that's you're starting then to go beyond an intellectual engagement with this and that's where the action is that's where this becomes your experience not just in the head it becomes in your heart and in your full body in all the centers that's why it's so important that you know a lot i know exactly what you're talking about and a lot of the people out there are just engaging on in the intellectual level and um that's not what this is <laughs> that's that's not what this is yeah but uh, I, I can relate so much to that trap to like just believe that you have to rethink it and think it again think yeah it from a different angle get more information read more yes like... it's it's kind of natural it's it's the idea that you can think your way out of it out of the suffering and it's a safer way of going about it because you're still <coughs> oops you're still in the land of what's safe to the personality thought and concept oh, if i've just got to change my think thinking a bit uh um, and then i'll be um yeah then i'll get it but it this, this goes much deeper than that through to a new level and you start oh my god i'd never seen that before that opens a door for you to see lots of other things and to move forward and i think um and sometimes it will come to you just direct from life and sometimes just the words sometimes a quote from someone or me saying something in a session will facilitate that and the main thing is your readiness you know what i feel in you is this readiness like you can use what i'm saying 
And the reason you can use it is because you, there's an openness to it. Now, somebody watching might think, well, he's he's been, I don't know, de, uh, influenced by me or uh, brainwashed by me or something. But I don't think that's what's, well, I know that's not what's going on here. This is This is a trust thing whereby I saw something that you couldn't see you trusted me enough at least to kind of be able to uh, hear it and think, well, maybe he's got something to tell me. And then you look at it yourself and then you find out if it's true or not. So it's not me implanting things in you that you believe. It's me saying, have you thought about this? I can, I, I'm feeling this about you. Then you look at it and you find out for yourself if it's true. If it's true, you'll know it. It's got a sense and it will have power for you and it will change your life. So this is the sort of sacred thing that's going on in this relationship. I think it's a very, it's a very special thing because, you know, out there in life, um, you know, how often do you get to engage with people on that level, on that very deep level? It's a very special thing. I think I don't take it for granted at all. When someone starts to open up, you know, sometimes it will take a while before it happens, but it's, it's like a sort of flower kind of opening and it's the, it's based on, time and trust and uh, all sorts of things coming together and readiness and openness yeah yeah the great thing is that i i kind of know that it's not used against me so the the experience of a personality is um like it it should not get exposed because other personalities use it against yes against me but in, in in this group and with you um and for myself i feel like this this stage of uh, nothing else matters as we have said once in the group yeah so it's just like absolutely ready to 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 like see it and to yeah to expose it when when it's not seen yeah yeah, that's is, why one of the chapters in my book is is called readiness it's it's this doesn't work without the readiness it's it's everything being in place uh and it's that you know if you're being run by that uh if the personality is running the show it wouldn't have taken you to this point because it would have said keep away from that guy don't go in that direction don't feel that feeling go and have a drink go and smoke all of those things right but you you have kind of gone beyond the dictates of your personality and it's brought you to this place and there's a vulnerability in it of course because you haven't been there before you know but am i right in saying it's i don't know you tell me is it bearing any gifts if so what would they be you mean from from uh, from this whole project um, well i mean in particular you know you like i said in the you you shared something in the group and you shared something on me in a session and you've gone to a place that you hadn't been before you shared something in the group so there's a lot of resistance to that and vulnerability i'm sure but Okay, so somebody might say, well, fuck that then, I don't want to do that. It's scary and uh, it's uncomfortable. So why are you doing it? Is, is there any benefit from it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's hard, to, hard to pin it down, but uh, one way to describe it is uh, when, for example, I look at something that I do and something that is not pretty, let's say, because I insult, insult people. Yeah. Then like the classic personality response from this from this guy here is uh, a certain pride and a certain a certain justification that um, like like makes it possible to be even even proud of those insults or to even frame it as such that that I'm a, I'm a wild guy that can use very dirty words and not feel bad about it has no morale. Mm -hmm. But I think it's pr pretty easy to fall into the to the opposite because then when you find out, oh my God, like that's 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 not what 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 personality is doing there. It's like it's defending itself. It's it's doing it's playing a dirty game, and then you feel bad about it, which is which is the opposite. But that's for me not not what that's about. Like for me, it is it's not about repairing it. I think that's very uh, worthy. Um, 
aspect. Uh, it's not about repairing it, it's just about seeing it. And um, this is what I mean by everything has to be seen. It's it's the seeing of it with the choice of awareness. And that's different from saying I'm a bad person or I shouldn't have done that. The seeing of it, choiceless awareness, is unemotional. It's pure and it doesn't have any judgment on what is seen. That's the important thing. But I'm still pushing you on this question, Marcus. It's like I'm saying, look, you've recently opened up a bit here. You have in the group and with me. And I, you could argue the personality might say, well, why are you doing that? What are you getting out of it? You're just you're more vulnerable. It's very difficult. It's very painful, the feelings that it brings up. So my question to you is, why are you doing it? Or what are you getting out of it? Um, I don't know if I can now satisfy your question, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, a good way to explain it to myself is that there's something that has a grasp, a grasp on this whole consciousness, and it gets loosened, and it sometimes gets completely loose. So right. this is this is um, just very good. It's very good to 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 let that go because it's very very sticky, and it's it's very. Um, <laughs> it's it's very hard to loosen. It's yeah. basically everywhere. It has so many so many yeah. points where it can where it can uh, hold you and yeah. even make you believe that it it is required. Yeah, and it's 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 everything you've come to think is normal and who you are, and you've been taught to believe it is who you are, and you're stuck with it, and you're that's how it is, and it can't change. And and I'm saying. That's not who you are. And there's some part of you that must be, otherwise you, we wouldn't even be talking now, that knows that that is not who you are, that has a, a sense. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would imagine from what you've just said, that senses that being without that contraction, as I use the word contraction a lot, you know, you call it sticky and this kind of shell that without that, there is a different kind of life that is possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's no small thing, this Marcus. I mean, it's like, can you imagine living without that sticky shell, that that contraction that you've just described? Yes, yes. Yeah. It's no small thing, this. It will change your life totally. That's very precious. It is, yeah.